historically, you know, every industry at all times is interested in, 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 in downsizing or becoming more efficient. Now, if the industry is growing, you can, you can achieve efficiency by doing more work or turning out more output with the same people. But you know, if you go back uh, 150 years and look at the percentage of people in, in farming, for example, farming has downsized from being a very appreciable percentage of the American workforce to a very small percentage. And essentially, that's released people to do other things. So it's, it's in the interests of society to, do, to get as much output in anything as it can per, per unit of, of labor input. It's very difficult on the individual involved, and and uh, you know it's 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 no fun. Uh, I guess it's no fun uh, being a horse when the tractor comes along, uh, or a blacksmith, and and when the car comes along. But the uh, the so I I don't I don't quarrel with the activities. I quarrel sometimes with how it's done, uh, and and I do think there's been a certain lack of. Uh, in certain cases, some empathy or some, uh, sensitivity in, in, in terms of the way it's being done. You should try to make in cases some empathy or some, uh, uh, sensitivity in, in, in terms of the way it's being done. You should try to make that will require us off people over time because we hope that physical output grows and that that uh, that uh, we become more productive and 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 can keep the same number of people to, to get greater output. Dexter Shoe has done a great job of that over, over time. They've become more and more productive, but they've sold more shoes instead of selling the same number of shoes and letting people go. But sometimes industry trends, I mean, at World Book, we have fewer people than we had a, a year or two ago, and we, we, didn't, we don't have any answer to that. Over time, we got out of the textile business. I wish we didn't have to, but it, it, we did not know how to run a textile company in New England and compete effectively. Uh, like I say, I would, I love avoiding those businesses, and to the extent we can, we will. I mean, Geico is going to add people over time, and I think Berkshire Hathaway is going to add people over time. But I can't. But it is in the interest of society to do jobs more effectively. It's also in the interest of society, it seems to me, for to take care, in some way, of the people that are affected by. Uh, uh, that activity, and either in some cases it's, it may be retraining, but in other cases, you know, it doesn't work so well if you're 55 years old and you've been working in a textile mill all your life, and all of a sudden the guy that runs the place can't make any money out of, out of selling your output. I mean, that's not the fellow's fault that been working in the textile mill for 30 years. So there's a balance in that. I think that the attention that's come about lately, I think there's to some degree it was a media fad based on on some particularly dramatic examples at a, a couple of companies. I, I don't think there is more displacement going on now as a percentage of the labor force annually than there was 10 years ago in terms of, uh, in, in terms of reconstituting what people do, but it's gotten a lot of attention lately. There could be a backlash on that uh, in terms of corporate tax rates or a number of things, and, and, and we might feel it in that direction. We wanted Berkshire to do everything as efficiently as we can. Part of that, in a big way, is not taking on a lot of people we don't need. I mean, uh, uh, a lot of the mistakes that are being corrected now are because people got very fat and their businesses got very fat in the past and took on all kinds of people they don't need. We see that in a lot of businesses that we're exposed to. And, and as long as they're very prosperous, really no one does very much about it. And then they, when the time comes, they all of a sudden find out they can get way more output. The oil companies are a classic example. You know, the, the, uh, the people probably actually needed to produce, refine, and, and market oil probably hasn't changed that much. But if you look at the employment relative to, to the uh, barrels, produced, refined, and, and, and marketed. It's gone down dramatically over 20 years ago. To me, it just means that they weren't being run that well 20 years ago, and, and it never should have occurred in the first place. Uh, we, uh, we don't want to take on more people than never should have occurred in the first place. Uh, we, uh, we don't want to take on more people than Charlie? businesses because we don't want to lay people off either. Charlie? Name a business 
that has been ruined because it was over downsized. I cannot think of a single one, but if you ask me to name businesses that were half ruined or ruined by bloat, I mean, I could just rattle off name after name after name. It's gotten fashionable to assume that downsizing is wrong. Well, it may have been wrong to let the business get so fat that it eventually had to downsize. But if you've got way more people than are needed in the business, uh, I see no social benefit in having people sit around on half employed or, or, or unemployed. You're very likely to compete against some guy, some guy at some point who doesn't have more people around than needed in the business too. But it doesn't change. If, for the people involved, they've got real problems. And uh, Warren, can uh, you name one that has been ruined by over downsizing? There must be one. But well, it's like Eisenhower said about Nixon: and "Give me a week, and I'll come up, come up with something." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Zone one. Good afternoon, Mr. Buffett. Uh, I'm Nelson Coburn from Silver Spring, Maryland. Uh, I have one question I want to ask that hasn't come up here yet. Uh, where does the money sit that comes in, say, from dividends and whatever other income that comes into Berkshire that you're waiting to invest someplace else? Is it get someplace where it's t taking in a profit, or is it just sitting gathering dust? No. Nah. <laughs> well. <laughs> We, uh, we only have about four or five commercial paper names we accept. We're, we're very picky about where we put oh, The money all gets invested. We do not have anything sitting around in the safe or uh, uh, anyplace else. So it's all invested. But we do not get venturesome in, in, in the least in terms of... Uh, in terms of uh, where our short-term money goes. So we only have, like like I say, maybe four or five approved names on commercial paper, all of which I approve. I mean, if anything ever goes haywire on this, it's my fault. Uh, right now, we have, uh, we have maybe a billion and something uh, in, uh, uh, in, sh in relatively short-term treasuries, and, and we have a little extra in, in, uh, in some commercial paper, maybe uh, but you will never see us reaching for an extra eighth of a percent on short-term yields. It, some of you may remember the fiasco in, the, in Penn Central in the commercial paper market. And, and Penn Central, around 1970 or thereabouts, was paying a quarter of a point, as I remember, more than other commercial paper issuers. And, of course, they, one day, despite showing a positive net worth, I think, of a billion and a half or so, they said they... They had a lot of net worth, but no cash. Turned out cash was more important, and so they defaulted. Now, the interesting thing about doing that is if you're getting a quarter of a point extra, and you, and you, you, you came over on the Mayflower, and you landed, and you said, well, I'm going to apply myself to getting a quarter of a point extra on short-term money, and you didn't make any mistake until you got to, uh, to Penn Central, you would sign from the compounding aspect, you, you would be behind at that point. And I, I don't like a business that you can do right for 300 years and then make one mistake and <laughs> be behind. So, so we, uh, we, we, we are very picky uh, about, uh, about short-term paper, but it, it is all invested. And uh, when it's large amounts, it, it probably will be in treasuries. It, uh, a couple, couple firms whose commercial paper we take. Uh, David Coles, Appleton, Wisconsin. Earlier you made reference to the vicissitudes of time. What are the plans to ensure that all the computer systems and companies in which Berkshire has an interest will function correctly with dates of January 1st, the year 2000 and beyond? And what will you do to reassure shareholders that we will not suffer serious business loss or failure due to incorrect handling of these dates by computer systems? Well, actually, I've got a friend that's quite involved in the, the question of, no, I'm, I'm serious about that, the, the, the 2000 question with computers. But that's the kind of thing I don't worry about. I mean, I'm, I will let the people who run the operating businesses uh, uh, work on that, and I'll work on capital allocation. And I have a feeling one way or another we'll get through it. But that, like I say, we have 
There are a lot of things at Berkshire we don't, we don't, we don't spend a lot of time on a lot of things at the at headquarters that other companies have whole departments on. That, uh, uh, and we, our managers have not let us down. I mean, I must say that we've, we've got a group uh, at one business after another, and they focus on their business, and they mail the money to us in Omaha, and we're all happy. <laughs> Charlie? I have the feeling that our people will be quite good at keeping the computer systems in order and with backups. I also have the feeling that few companies could handle a big computer snafu better than we could. I have the feeling the Coca-Cola stock would be there, the Gillette stock would be there, the Nebraska Furniture Mart would be full of furniture and know the customers. I don't think a computer crash is going to do us in. Yeah. You're correct, though, that that is a, that is a problem for for the computer world, but but uh, as Charlie says, it'll hit other people a lot, a lot harder than it hits us. Most of the things we try to be in businesses that are that are fairly simple and that can't get all messed up. Uh, and by and large, I think that uh, that we've got an unusual portfolio of those. It, uh, and when it gets to our investees, you know, they they're going to worry about those problems themselves. We really worry about allocating money around Berkshire and, and having the right managers in place. That, that, if, if we can do those two right, everything else will take care of itself. And zone three. My name is Peter Bevelin from Sweden. Uh, you have said that you like franchise companies, companies that, have, uh, uh, that are castles surrounded by moats. Uh, companies that are possible to, you can have some prediction five, ten years down the road. But aren't businesses like uh, uh, Seas Candy, the furniture business, um, the jewelry business, the shoe business, businesses that are hard to predict the, the future five, ten years down the road? What was that on the last part of it? Aren't these businesses hard to predict five or ten years down the I road? Think, Things think, like shoe business. And yeah, I, I think they're far easier to predict than most businesses. I, I, I think I can come closer to telling you the future of virtually all of the businesses we have, and not just because we have them, I mean if they belong to somebody else, than if I, if I took the, uh, the Dow 30, uh, excluding the ones we own, or, we, or, or uh, you know, the first hundred companies alphabetically on the New York Stock Exchange, I think, they're, I think ours are way easier. Uh, to predict, they're 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 fair. They're, they tend to be fundamental things, fairly simple. Uh, rate of change is not not fast, uh, so I, I I feel pretty uh, pretty comfortable. I think when you look at 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 Berkshire five years from now, the businesses we have now will be performing pretty much as we've anticipated at this time. I hope there are some new ones, and I hope they're big ones, but I don't think that we'll have had lots of surprises in the present one. My guess is we'll have had one surprise. I don't know what it'll be, but I mean, you know, you, th that happens in life. But, but there won't be a, a, a series of them. Whereas if you, if we were to buy, uh, we owned a, a base metals business, or, or many many retailing businesses I can think of, or uh, an auto business. Uh, I'm not sure I'd know where we would stand in the competitive pecking order uh, five or ten years from now. It, uh, uh, I would not want to uh, try and come in and uh, displace these candies, for example, in, in the business it does, it, uh, or the furniture mart. It's just it's not an easy job. So I uh, I don't think you'll get lots of surprises with the present businesses of, uh, of Berkshire. But the key is uh, is developing more of them. Zone four. 